support Galaxy second generation. Uh, this video can be applied for SMAX or Mandeo, anything that has an engine layout like that, uh, which has a 2 liter TDCI engine. This Ford has a problem with alternator, I'm going to replace it and we're going to show you how to do it. First we're going to remove this cover, you just pull it off. And let's have a look where the alternator is. It's located just there. This is our fuel filter. As you can see, this little thing is the alternator. So there are two ways to get there. We can either do it from the bottom removing compressor, and that's what I do for my VW. But uh, as far as I know, we can easily do it through the top. It looks quite friendly around here. All we got to do is just remove the air filter and remove some bit on the uh, intake. So let's do that. Let's remove the uh, fuel filter cover held by two T30 Torx and there's one 10 millimeter nut just here. So let's undo those. So with the last nut off, take this cover off. Then we remove this oil pipe place where we fill up with the oil so pressing this stuff here and take it away and then we're gonna move it about just to get to where we need to go so let's remove this intake bit we'll take these three nuts uh, three bolts out then there is a nut just here 13 mil I'll take the camera just to show you uh, this 13 mil nut and then there is another one underneath most likely it's gonna be 10 mil. See right in the middle of this screen? Just a sec, I'll try to point it. This one here. And then there is another one just here, 10 millimeter. So let's remove those. So one, two, three. Nut, nut, and it's this one here, nut. So that's five millimeter Allen for this three. So with with this three removed, um, this one requires long socket because it has a stud sticking out quite far. So we're gonna remove this little nut. This one is quite easy to remove because you not risking to drop it that much because unlike those at the bottom but we remove those at the bottom in a minute as well then we get into this little nut here it's quite tricky once you get the nut loose maybe try to do it by hand so you don't drop it less than anything we want to drop nuts underneath that bolt underneath appears to be 13 mil, so it's not 10. Oh, it's falling down now. I've just made it loose, and I'm gonna take it out by hand so we don't drop it. I've just dropped that bolt underneath somewhere, so we're gonna find it in a minute. Uh, so to in order to remove this, we're gonna remove a few connectors: one, two, three. Disconnect connectors, and then move these clips aside. So we can take, move it, uh, move it away. So this is how we remove these connectors. Push this up, disconnect. This one, we press this one in, or we can help it from this end and disconnect. Same as the one there. So with the last connector out, it was a bit fiddly to disconnect it. Now we can move. I'm gonna remove this side of the connector. As you can see, it's connected by the little clip here. And here comes the 13 mil bolt. Always handy to have. They don't. They're not expensive. Little metal. <laughs> metal magnet. <laughs> Plastic <laughs> magnet. Make sure you don't drop any rubbish in there, because uh, that's. That's the air that's going into your engine, so it's maybe it's nice to cover it with something like a rubber glove 
I think it will fit on here. You can stick something in there, like a something. But we'll be careful. We're not gonna drop anything there. But be warned, so you don't drop anything there. Two 10 millimeter nuts here. One and two. That's probably another protection for for the filter. It's intake by plastic bag. And after these two two nuts removed, I can remove this little cover and see what is holding the fuel filter. Now the fuel filter is held by four bolts. There is one there. It's a nut. More, look, more looks like a nut. Then there is one just there. That's a bolt. Bolt, nut. Then there is one just through this hole there. 10 mil, nut. And then we have to disconnect this one as well. This is bolt that goes in. We're probably taking it a bit further than we should, but I think if we remove the headlight, then uh, it will be easier to get access to the filter. So we've got two bolts here. They can be different. They can be 10 mil. They can be cross head. Oh, let's disconnect connector first. Like that. Let's. Uh, I'll start with the small nut here. Small bolt here. Okay. And with this tune out, we can simply take the headlight out. Maybe another unnecessary step, but we want to make it even easier. We're going to remove this plastic bit. T30, three of them. So with the last screw out, T30, we hopefully can take this protection out. What I normally do, so we don't lose them, because we've taken quite a few bolts out, I always put bolts where they belong to. So when you're putting back together, you don't, don't get confused by the, by the pile of bolts, you don't know what to put. Yeah. With this layout, it's much better access now. What we're going to do now, we're going to disconnect intake and out, output pipe uh, hoses. So to do so, you press on this white bit, pull this out, and then press on white bit again, and then it comes off like that, like that. So to avoid any dirt coming in there, I've got a finger from a glove that I'm gonna put on on the top and then we do the same to you press on the outer bit pull this outer bit pull this middle bit out then press by pressing outer bit in you can take the this out so now we take 10 millimeter uh, look where I'm going so that's that's the Nut number one. I don't know if you can see, but it held fuel filter at the bottom. I think I made it loose. And I'm gonna just remove it. The tool that I thought is gonna be optional, it's absolutely necessary for this job to get these little nuts out. Right, I'm gonna put fuel filter stuff here. Right, I have two more. And then we do this one the last because it's the easiest one and then remove the filter one thing you need to know the top bolt uh nut there's a bolt nut uh that top one it's quite deep inside and not not that deep inside but the um stud it sits on it's quite long so i try to normal 10 millimeter socket like that will not do 
a long 10 millimeter socket that I had for half inch it also doesn't it doesn't work because it doesn't go inside because it's thicker at the beginning so I had a had to do a little trip to local shop and get long 10 millimeter sockets if you got long sockets it's no problem you should be okay then last 13 millimeter bolt it's here not you don't even have to take it out completely and here comes the fuel filter nice and steady oh it's, it's it has some connection here at the bottom of the filter there is another little pipe we're not gonna disconnect that otherwise it will drain the filter we're not gonna go that long way we're going a long way anyway already so what we're going to do we're gonna move it aside and leave it there now back to our alternator we have a tensioner now we need to remove the belt this is our tensioner here so what you got to do there is like a 15 millimeter bolt in the middle and what you have to do you have to put the 15 millimeter spanner on, on it and then turn it clockwise to release tension so the and then further further along you can do either just drop the belt of the accelerate uh, alternator and then release the tensioner as far as it goes as, well, as far as it wants to go then you change the alternator or you can pin it if you do have a pin it's like one of those any pin male will do and then you turn it tensioner as far as it goes and you, I'll show you where the pin goes in a minute as I'll turn it and also tensioner is quite strong so what I, I do normally I use extension because is, this is a bit too short you maybe not might not have enough power so you can use say 16 mil spanner on the top and use it as a longer so it, this should turn it that's what we are going to do now I don't know if you can see I've turned that bolt and you see, you see where the pin goes just there so now we have we can just drop the uh, belt of the alternator we don't do don't need to do much else because we all, all, all we need to do is and we need to put extra protection there now because it fell off one more important thing because there is a live cable running from alternator to battery charging a battery so we don't want to make any sparks when we disconnect live cable from the alternator we would rather have it disconnected on the other end so what we're gonna do I'm gonna disconnect positive terminal of the battery so we don't make any accidental sparks now we just need to disconnect the electrical connection for alternator one is the connector like this Squeeze it. There we go. So we disconnect we disconnect this little connector by pulling that tab out of the way and then we can sit, remove the insulation. You see how important it is because it's a live wire, we don't want to make any sparks. That's why we disconnected the positive terminal on the battery. Then it's a normally it's 13 millimeter nut and we disconnect it then another one little 5 millimeter allen just underneath ah, that one there in the middle 5 millimeter allen I can't show it to you but you see it there right in the middle of the screen 5 millimeter allen you need to take it out. I'm gonna take it out first because it's the smallest one. It holds a little bracket. This five is it five millimeter? I think so. Yeah, five millimeter Allen. You take it out from underneath the alternator. It holds a little bracket. Now, three sixteen millimeter bolts that hold the alternator before we take it out. Happy days.
No, that's 13. Bolt number one. I'm gonna get to bolt number two in a minute. And the last bolt, I've removed two on the other side of the alternator. And the last bolt, sorry if I'm not covering completely every move. We are a bit struggling here. Look at the shape of this bolt here. Probably meant to pull in so it, get, it fixes the alternator in place. Right. Now we have to wiggle this alternator out, avoiding damaging anything else. When we, before installing new alternator, make sure it's the same alternator, same connections, make sure pulleys are in the same. You can see it's different plastic cup here, but the pulleys, same amount of grooves, six, six. So we're gonna install new alternator now. Now we're gonna put everything back in reverse sequence. If you go to this point, you know how to put it back. One more thing I need to mention. I thought positive terminal has to be disconnected, which is also not a bad thing to do, but um, it's easier to disconnect negative uh, connections, so do with negative. As the instruction says, the alternator came with the instruction says ne disconnect negative. Negative is always easy, but I want the hard way. You don't go, you don't repeat my mistakes. Now we're going to put everything back and off we go. Thank you for watching.